Hey guys, welcome back to my next video. This one's going to be an operation session, and it's going to be set a little bit differently than what I've done in the past. It's going to, the time frame is going to be the early 2000s, say 2000 through 2003. So that'll put it in a time frame when the railroads are Union Pacific and BNSF as far as the owners of the joint line. But it's still early enough that they haven't yet switched over to distributed power units for the helpers. They're actually using manned helpers still on the joint line. So with that, let's go ahead and check it out. In the early morning hours, a Burlington Northern Santa Fe coal train comes to a stop in the yard in Denver, while at the same time, the switch engines for the yard, two SD40-2s, begin their work for the day. In the distance, the engines for the BNSF local pull off the ready tracks. Just a few years ago, the switch engines in the BNSF yard in Denver were SD9s, but now with them retired, the switch engines are SD40-2s. BNSF 6701 is painted in Santa Fe's Heritage 1 paint scheme, and prior to being repainted was Burlington Northern 6701, and was built in December 1974 for the BM. BNSF 3061, a GB40-2, and BNSF 2226 and Jeep 38 have pulled off the ready tracks and are moving on to the main line. These engines will be for the local that will head up to Golden, Colorado. BNSF 2226 was originally Santa Fe 2336 prior to being repainted and was built for the Santa Fe in August 1970. Colorado's joint line runs between Denver and Pueblo, Colorado, and is jointly owned and operated by the Union Pacific Railway and the BNSF Railway. My layout depicts the operations between Denver and Palmer Lake, Colorado. The lead units from the BNSF coal train have also uncoupled and will now move forward onto the fueling tracks to refuel prior to continuing south over the joint line. BNSF 5615 and 8985 are both painted in BNSF's Heritage 2 paint scheme, which they began applying to wide cab locomotives in September 98. BNSF 9512 still wears the original BN Executive paint scheme, which it was painted in when it was built in January 1995. Both BNSF 9512 and 9885 are SD70 Max, while 5615 is an AC 4400. The all-AC powered engine contest now pulls onto the fueling tracks. Meanwhile, the SD40-2s continue switching the yard. Moving south to Palmer Lake, we catch a Union Pacific Manifest heading north, coming off of the single track main line onto the dedicated northbound track of the joint. The lead unit in this train, Union Pacific 5075, was originally built for the Chicago and Northwestern in December 1985 as Unit 7015, and was renumbered to its We Will Deliver paint scheme in November 1996. This train is a manifest train from Pueblo to Denver. The cut of empty gondolas in the train is from the Colorado Fuel and Iron Plant in Pueblo and are a regular part of this train's consist. This train is also conducting a power move 
taking some of UP's older SD45s and SD40-2 tunnel motors to Burnham Shops in Denver, ultimately for divestiture or scrapping. Returning to Denver, we catch Southern Pacific 2754 conducting a switching movement. 2754 is still wearing its original Southern Pacific paint and has not been renumbered into the Union Pacific system yet. It was originally built for the Southern Pacific in September 1975. Today it's being used on a switching assignment, switching out a grain elevator in North Denver. The SD40-2s continue to switch the Burlington Northern Santa Fe yard. A trio of Burlington Northern Santa Fe high horsepower units come off the ready tracks and move into place to take a train south over the joint line. The second engine in this consist, being a SF-1005, is a C44-9W and was bought by the BNSF in September 96. And this was during the time frame when all BNSF engines were being painted into the Heritage 1 paint scheme, which it's still wearing today. What will be the lead unit of the train, the NSF-8301, is an SD-75i and was the last SD-75i purchased by BNSF in December 1997. The third unit in this consist is a C40-8W, number 841, uh, still lettered in Santa Fe, and is one of the 3800 horsepower uh, dash 8s that the railroad had. With its power in place, the train now departs Denver headed to Amarillo, Texas. As it leaves Denver, the train will move onto the dedicated southbound line of the joint line. Most of the joint line is double track with a dedicated northbound and southbound line except for a section of single track between Palmer Lake, Colorado and Colorado Springs. The train now passes through Big Lift. By the early 2000s, Big Lift was primarily just a location to stage helper units out of, which were needed for heavy southbound trains, and then the yard tracks were also a storage or overflow uh, area for the yards in Denver. The loaded southbound grain train will stop at Big Lift for its helper units. We also catch the Union Pacific Northbound Manifest train at Big Lift.
Like many places along the joint line, Big Lip has two different milepost markers for the northbound and southbound lines. On the southbound line, it is milepost 19.3, while on the northbound line, it is milepost 718. This is a result from the northbound and southbound main lines originally being built by two different railroads, the Santa Fe and Rio Grande, each with their own independent milepost markers. With the main line now clear, the helper engines can cross over onto the southbound joint. With its helper engines in place, the train now continues its southbound journey. This pair of helper units are both SD40-2s, one still painted in the Santa Fe blue and yellow war bonnet, while the other is wearing Burlington Northern's white face paint scheme. Helper engines are needed on the joint line for a heavy southbound trains such as coal and grain between Denver and Palmer Lake. At Palmer Lake, the helpers return to Denver or Big Lift if they're staged at a Big Lift. Passing through the town of Larkspur, the train now crosses over the old Santa Fe Bridge. The joint line is interesting in that since it was built as two separate lines by the Santa Fe Railroad and the Rio Grande Railroad, uh, bridges and track work still maintain some of the iconic symbols of each of those railroads. The old bridge abutments seen here are from when originally when the Santa Fe tracks had to fly over the Rio Grande tracks before the joint line was created during World War II. The train has a red signal at Palmer Lake and will have to hold north of Palmer Lake prior to moving on to the single mainline track. A northbound Union Pacific coal train makes its way around Palmer Lake. The lead unit on this train, number 8104, is an SD9043AC, commonly called an SD90 Mac, and was built for Union Pacific in January 96. Today the train will actually stop at Palmer Lake, while the lead engine, 8104, will temporarily cut itself off from the other engines and pull forward. Yesterday, on a different Union Pacific southbound coal train, Southern Pacific AC4400-355 shut down as it was coming off the grade north of Palmer Lake. The railroad opted to go ahead and set the engine out on the holding track at Palmer Lake, and now this empty coal train will go ahead and pick up the engine and return it to Denver for repair. Three five five will now be the lead engine, although it is pointing backwards, and the crew will remain in 8104 from there. This will cause the train to be restricted to 20 miles an hour for the remainder of its journey across the joint line. This train is returning from the Ray Nixon power plant south of Colorado Springs. The CNW hoppers have replaced the old Five Bay Ortner hoppers that were lettered for the Colorado Springs Department of Utilities.
The other two engines on this train are both AC 4400s. Number 6885 was built for the Union Pacific in November 95, and number 232 was built for the Southern Pacific in June 95, and is about to be renumbered to become Union Pacific 6510. At the grain elevator in Denver, the switch engine has dropped off the loaded grain hoppers and is now picking up the empty ones to return them to the yard. The Union Pacific Manifest Freight has also arrived in Denver. The switch crew now sets the hoppers out on the runaround track. The BNSF local that we saw depart earlier is returning from its run up to Golden, Colorado with a cut of insulated boxcars. Having completed its runaround move, the Southern Pacific Switcher takes the cut of cars back to the Union Pacific Yard at Pico Street. After setting out the cars, the engines head back to the ready tracks.
Another Southern Pacific switcher, this one an MP15DC, brings a cut of cars to a couple local industries. Number 2699 was built for the Southern Pacific in January 1975. Returning to the BNSF engine facility, we see another consist of engines being prepared to take a train south over the joint line. This consist contains a rather unusual site for the joint line in a Canadian National SD40-2. The lead unit in this consist is a SD75M number 247. The SD75M was the last engine purchase by the Santa Fe prior to its merger with Burlington Northern in 1995. The Union Pacific coal train has finally arrived in Denver and makes its way past the Burlington Northern Santa Fe yard. The Kansas City-bound Manifest train now departs Denver. The second engine in the consist is a C44-9W number 600. This engine was one of the first Dash 9s ordered by the Santa Fe and was built in March 1994. The cut of insulated cars from Golden, Colorado are the first part of this train and will be handed off to the Norfolk Southern as soon as this train arrives in Kansas City. Returning back to Palmer Lake, we catch another northbound train. This one is a Burlington Northern Santa Fe intermodal train.
This train originated in Houston. With the single track now clear, 8301 can continue its journey southward. The train will pull forward, but then stop again to drop the helpers off at Palmer Lake. Once uncoupled from the helpers, the train continues its journey south. The helper engines will follow the train across County Line Road before switching over to the northbound track and returning to Big Lift. Returning north to Big Lift, we catch a meet between the Kansas City-bound Manifest train and the Denver-bound Intermobil train. The southbound manifest train will stop at Big Lift where a set of helper engines will be added on. This helper set consists of another XBN ST40-2 in the white face paint scheme and a X Santa Fe ST45-2.
This train will also have to come to a stop at Palmer Lake while it waits for a green signal. Meanwhile, the other set of helper engines is arriving back at the cliff. The Southern Pacific MP15 DC switcher is continuing its work in Denver as well. We also see that the lead engines from the BNSF intermodal train have cut off and are now backing their way towards the engine facility. The engines in this contest were number 3843, a GP50, 8721, a Jeep60, and number 572 and 566, both B40-8Ws. Returning back to the switch engine, it has cut off three cement hoppers from the cut of cars it was bringing to industries and is now shoving them towards the cement pipe. The crew will set these three loaded hoppers out and also pick up three empties during its run. Here we catch a southbound Union Pacific Auto train as it makes its way through Denver in preparation for heading over the joint line. The lead unit, number 3105, was built for the Rio Grande in 1972 and has survived both the Southern Pacific and Union Pacific mergers still intact with its original paint. However, it'll soon be renumbered to Union Pacific 5259. With their fueling complete, these three AC powered BNSF engines now return to their culture. The other engines in the Union Pacific train are a GP40, number 3059, a rebuilt GP40 M-2, number 7122, and the final one, 8003, a B39-8E.
Relocating south, we catch a BNSF empty coal train rounding Palmer Lake. The three SD-70 MAX leading this train, number 9897, 9719, and 9655, were built in September 98, January 96, and August 95, respectively. With the single track clear, the dispatcher wastes no time giving the train a green signal south. This Kansas City bound train would normally run east directly out of Denver and not go over the joint line. But because of track maintenance on the NSF's main line across Nebraska, this train will go south on the joint line to Pueblo, cut over to La Junta, and then move across up to Kansas City. Just south of Big Lift, we catch a meet between the Union Pacific Auto Rack train and the BNSF Empty Coal train. The Union Pacific Auto train is light enough that it does not require helpers to head over the joint line. Returning to Palmer Lake, we find the Kansas City bound train is again moving south, having cut off its helpers. The helpers cross over to the dedicated northbound line of the joint line and return to Big Lift. The Union Pacific Auto Train now passes through the town of Larkspur and crosses East Parrot Park Avenue.
The light is beginning to fade as the train passes the old Santa Fe fire. The helper engines have arrived back at Big Lift and are staging themselves for their next assignment. The empty BNSF coal train has arrived in Denver as the switch engines continue switching out the yard. This train arrived in Denver this morning, and now with the day almost done, it is finally refueled as a new crew, and is heading out south over the jungle. Arriving in Big Lift, we can see the golden rays of the setting sun reflecting off the engine. Once stopped at Big Lift, the helper engines are once again added to the rear of the train. The light is fading quickly as the train crosses the old Santa Fe Bridge at Larkspur. Arriving at Palmer Lake, the train has a green signal, so it continues on through. But will still stop to drop off its helpers once they reach Palmer Lake. By the time the helper engines arrive at Palmer Lake, the sun has set and the last little bit of light is quickly fading. Thank you. 
With the light almost completely gone, we'll watch one final movement as the helpers move over to the dedicated northbound line and return to Big Lift. I hope you enjoyed this operation session. Please subscribe to the channel and look for more operation sessions, video reviews, and how-tos in the coming future. And as always, keep running your trains, keep enjoying them, and we'll see you at the next update.